everyone. I hope everyone is doing well on this Wednesday. We're gonna give it a little bit longer for people to trickle in. We have a few more people in the waiting room. While we're waiting, shout out your school in the chat, please. I wanna see who all is in the building this evening. Okay, Spellman. I myself am a Howard University alumna. All right, Voorhees. Oh, wow, you got people from all over the place. I see the, I'm about to say, I see the South is in here. All right, a and I see Morgan State, Morris College, Lane, Johnson C. Smith. All right. Texas Southern. Okay, I know people are still going to be trickling in. People are probably driving home from work or getting home from class. But I'm going to go ahead and kick us off in the interest of time because we have a lot for y'all today. So welcome everyone. Um, as you come in, please make sure that you are on mute. So we can hear a little bit in the background and everything like that. Thank y'all so much. So good evening, everybody. My name is Victoria Smith. I uh, work at the United Negro College Fund with the Institute for Capacity Building team. And uh, we are doing this program in partnership with the Steve Fund, talk about them a little more as well. And this session is called New Year, New Me, Taking Care of the Me and Mental Health. So a little bit about the organizations that are putting this on, our wonderful partners at the Steve Fund, um, that is one of the nation's leading organizations. Um, they're focused on supporting mental health and emotional well-being for young people of color. We started working together um, a few years back now um, to have tailored programming for HBCU students because we know that the HBCU experience uh, for a student is different than a Black student, a PWI's experience. Um, like I said, I'm with United Negro College Fund with our Institute for Capacity Building team. And we focus on um, building the heritage of HBCUs, building on the legacy and uh, that we stand on. And like I said, we've partnered together to center mental health and um, bring down the stigma and fight against the stigma that persists within our everyday life and sometimes within our culture. So we have two co-facilitators today. Um, the first that you will hear from is Alexa Chandler. She's a mental health expert um, and a co-facilitator and someone that works regularly with the Steve Fund. So we're so happy to have her. And we also have Krista Marsh, who's a graphic designer and the CEO of Creations Company, who's gonna get into Canva and things of that nature and show y'all how to um, make your vision boards. So last thing for me, a quick session overview. So we have the welcome, which I just did. Then we have a chat icebreaker to help people feel a little bit more comfortable. Then we're gonna talk about goal setting for mental health specifically. Um, we're going to get a little bit into the benefits of visualization. I feel like people just do vision boards or prayer boards or whatever people do. They don't really know why they're doing it and don't understand how it helps them in the long run. So Alexa will be going over that. Um, we'll do an introduction to vision boards in general. Then we'll talk about creating personalized vision boards. And last, we will take some time to share our vision and goals and wrap up there. So with that, I'm going to take a step back and pass it on over to Alexa to get us started. 
Thank you for that. So good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here again. My name is Alexa Chandler. I am a licensed social worker. I currently work at Hearts Empowerment. It's a private practice in New Jersey. So as we get started, right, to shake off the nervousness, we're going to start with the icebreaker. So I want you guys to think about where you see yourself in five to 10 years. Then think about what emoji represents that. For example, if you're graduating, you might want to do the emoji with the cap and gown. If you want to fall in love, you might do the emoji with the heart. So just put um, what emoji represents how you see yourself in the chat box. Okay, so we have a few. We got nails done. I feel like that's, I want to be slayed, okay? I want to be a professional, a teacher. I want to have money. A lot of money <laughs> emojis in the chat box. I want to celebrate, have a house. I love that. Go on vacation, be a doctor. These are all great. Graduation, these are all great. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So we're going to talk a little bit about how goal setting actually impacts our mental health, right? So let's start with why does it matter? Why does goal setting matter when you hear that question? One, it gives us clear direction, right? It allows us to follow a path that we see ourselves in, right? To find our higher true, our higher self or what they'll say is our true self. It keeps us aligned with where we want to be in the future. So all those emojis that you guys put in the chat, it helps us focus on getting there, right? It allows us to stay motivated. When we see our goals, when we track our goals, we continue to be motivated to be that vision, that dream that we have in our head, right? It allows us to be organized, allows us to have time management to problem solve, what actually leads to managing your stress and anxiety, right? When you do things in a timely manner, when you're productive, right? You're reducing being stressed out. Um, it allows us to track things, right? When you have goal setting, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides about how we track our goals. What does that look like? How do we break it down? So let's go to the benefits of goal setting. There's so many benefits of goal setting. One, we all have created something in our head that's whether we dream about being something or we want to go somewhere. So the benefits of it in writing it down is that we allow ourselves to see there. And then when we're accomplish it, accomplishing it in small doses, we're becoming confident in our abilities, right? We're learning new skills. We're paving the way for our future selves, right? It actually allows you to experience less anxiety and sadness. And you're getting to know yourself better, right? When you're writing down your goals, you're reflecting on who you are, how you show up in spaces and where you wanna go, right? So it's it building that emotional strength. It allows you to handle those life challenges. We all go through challenges and stressors and what goals do, it allows us to manage them. It allows us to see them not as a problem, but as something that we can accomplish, right? So this leads to improving our overall overall well-being and our overall health happiness. Next slide, please. So when you think about goals, let's think about how we're going to break them down right? Because goals, that's such a big term. So I can have a goal to say, oh, I want financial freedom. But what does that look like, right? What is the short-term goal in that? And that could typically be measured in days, weeks, months, or even quarters. So it could say, I want to learn how to budget. I want to create a budget each month. That may be your short-term goal, right? To get to that long-term goal. I saw a few people put, I want a house. With a house, you need money. So maybe you have to save a certain amount, right? Or get educational. What does it look like to get a house, to have a house, right? Or it could be, I want to lose weight. So my short-term goal may be, well, I want to start going back into the gym. I want to start going outside a little bit more, right? And then when you balance those short-term and long-term goals, it actually allows you to have personal growth because sometimes your short-term goals will get you to those long-term goals, 
right? They can provide you, they short-term goals help you stay motivated, right? They set, help you stay confident in yourself and they also help you practice time management. Next slide. So one of the favorite, my favorite strategies, and I think a lot of people may have heard of it, but if you didn't heard of it, you're going to hear about it now. It's SMART goals, right? Breaking our goals down into something that it, what they call SMART. So we're going to start with S. S is specific, right? So you're defining your goal clear, clearly. What exactly do you want to do? What exactly do you want to achieve? So going back to let's use the financial goal as an example. I want to achieve, you know, just that financial freedom. Okay, but what does that look like? I want to get out of debt, right? I want to have a certain amount in my bank account. I want to be able to put a down payment on this, right? That makes the goal specific, right? If you want to talk about mental well-being, like I just want to be happy. It might start with sitting with yourself, reflecting on those things that you want to change, that you want to do, that you want to improve in yourself. It might say, you know, I want to start going to therapy every week. I want to go outside a little bit more. Next in the SMART, we have measurable. How do you measure that success, right? And that could go back to short-term goals. So it's like, if I complete a budget and do a budget every week, I'm measuring it by saying, well, I completed my budget um, tracker for this month, right? Or if we're going to mental health, I went to therapy twice this month and I really connected with my therapist, right? Achievable. So I love this aspect of the SMART because sometimes we could dream big, right? We could be like, I want a million dollars. I want a mansion. And although those are amazing goals, you have to think about where you are in life. Not saying you won't ever get there, but how, where you are in life and what makes sense for you, right? Not looking at what the other people are accomplishing, but what is realistic for you that can you can accomplish, because what we say in like, what I say to some of my clients is you want to set yourself up for success, right? You don't want to set yourself up with such a high goal that you feel down when you may not achieve it. Then you want to have a goal that is relevant. Does it align with where you want to be? Does it align with who you see yourself as, right? Your authentic self, your true self. Then time. I always say, put time on a goal. Right. Because I can say, oh, I want to work out. Well, when? When do I want to work out? OK, I want to work out on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And now I have that goal that I'm going to work out. Next slide. So some examples of goals we have, um, we're going to break it down for exercise, mindfulness, friendship academics and self-care. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you a little bit about this theory, right? It's called identity-based theory, theory uh, identity based theory, right? And what that says is that if we start to identify with our goals to say like, I am a person that works out. I am a person that has a positive attitude. I am a person that is social and has many friends right? We're going to look forward to those goals. So for example, exercise, you say, I want to, you're breaking it down. So I want to commit myself to 30 minutes of physical activity three times a week. When you don't want to get out of bed, you say, well, I am a person that works out for three, 30 minutes, um, three times a week, or I'm a person that goes for a walk in the morning and your mind will start to shift and to start to, you'll start to become that person and show up as that person right? Mindfulness. I want to practice my uh, meditation daily. I want to practice deep breathing and taking deep breaths in through my nose and out through my mouth slowly to calm myself out down throughout the day, right? Friendships. I want to connect with my friends once a week, right? Sense of belonging is so important because we're human. We need the, that sense of connectivity, right? We need that sense of sense of belonging and how we relate to others and how in having those meaningful conversations. Academics, a lot of you guys are in school. Right? So you guys shout out some great and amazing schools. Where do you see your grades, right? Like whether you want to continue to improve them or whether you want to get an internship, right? How are you going to get to that goal? 
and self-care. Self-care is the most important care, right? You need to make time for yourself. I know you guys are probably in school and working and doing internships, but taking at least 15 to 30 minutes a day for yourself is so crucial for your mental health because it allows you to kind of just relax, to get the day's worries off of you, finding those hobbies or those things that you love, right? And self, I want to make a note that self-care, you know, people say, oh, well, I'm doing skincare, that's self-care. No, that's self-maintenance, right? Self-care is really doing those activities that you find joy in, right? Hanging out with friends or calling up a friend, um, you know, doing something that's fun. If you like art, drawing, and just sitting down and just feeling safe, feeling comfortable with yourself. Next slide. So I want you guys to, I see some people have been writing. How do you guys think that goal setting can improve your overall mental health, right? So how could goal setting improve your own mental health? If we could get a few people to write in the chat box. And I can start, right? For me, I think goal setting allows me to improve my mental health because when I'm worried, it gives me a place to say, wow, I can accomplish this. I can have something to look forward to that, yes, I might be stressed now, but I know I'm going to accomplish something in the end. So I see some people put goal setting can reduce stress. Yes, can reduce stress and anxiety, giving us a purpose right? Goal setting can allow you to say, wow, this is my true self and I'm really working toward getting there. It can relieve anxiety. I, I believe it keeps you balanced, yes, and on track and time management and productivity, right? Provides structure, right? Goal setting allow us to not feel overwhelmed since we plan it out beforehand. It makes us feel calm. Goal setting makes me feel proud of myself, for the efforts and accomplishments. Those are really great. Next slide, please. So guys, I have a little challenge for you. It was a mystery quote. I dream it, I work hard, I grind till I own it. Who said this? Let's see who's gonna be the first one. But don't look it up. <laughs> okay. So yes, we got some, oh, somebody said Steve Jobs. Okay, we got a lot of Beyonce. Someone said Steve Jobs. Maybe he said it too. Okay, that's great. Okay, next slide, please. So I'm just going to share a little bit of research behind vision boards and goal setting and why this makes sense, right? So goal setting, when we write it down and we make it... um a vision board or we give it something to visualize, what it does, it, it motivates us because you're looking at this thing every day like, wow, that's where I want to be. That's how I see myself. So some research suggests that visualization promotes relaxation, enhances sleep, reduces pain and increases creativity, right? Also, when you're able to visualize your goals, you're thinking about those happy moments, right? So you're increasing what we call happy chemicals, right? The, the endorphins, the dopamine levels, right? Some forms of visualization have been shown to increase optimism, right? Because maybe you're feeling down one day, you're down and out on yourself, you're having those ants, those automatic negative thoughts. And then you look at your vision board and it motivates you. It creates you to be like, okay, I'm going to be positive about today. I'm going to start over today. Um, right. Vision boards like these can be used to facilitate some kinds of decision making and problem solving, right? We talked a lot about people put structure in there, being productive, time management, um, visualization can also help us achieve our goals by allowing us to determine the appropriate sequences of our actions, right, needed to reach our goal and identify any potential obstacles we might encounter. So when you think about goals, right, like let's use going to the gym. An obstacle may be, it's cold outside. I don't really feel like getting up and going to the gym. But when you have a goal in mind to say, wow, I want to become fit, I want to you know, lose a little weight. I want to work on my um, endurance, right? Visualizing that motivates you to actually go to the gym and going back to that identity-based 
um, theory is to say, I am a person that works. I am a person that wants to take time to just kind of walk daily for 30 minutes a day, right? Um, next slide. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Krista Marsh. I am a graphic designer and CEO of Creations Co. So that is where I also do creative direction, content creation, and influencer and brand management. So I'm really excited to be here tonight with you guys to just explain a little bit more about what vision boards are. So I know a lot of you have probably already done vision boards this year specifically with your friends, maybe with your family. You may have already had your own vision board party. We might be a little bit late to the party right now since it's January 31st, but luckily we do have tomorrow as February 1st, so it's time to get those goals started. Um, a vision board is a visual representation of your goals, dreams, and aspirations. So this is something that typically is going to consist of a collage of images, words, and symbols that reflect what you want to do and achieve and manifest in your life. So not only have they been called vision boards, you may have heard prayer boards or manifestation boards, all those are the same thing. Um, we're just creating a vision board that can be fun and powerful for you to clarify your objectives and keep them at the forefront of your mind. So that's really important. And I know that Alexa has given us all the tools and tips to show how we need to goal set specifically for our mental health. So thinking about all those goals, I hope you guys are brainstorming as we're going because we will be doing a demo so you can maybe follow along with me. I would really encourage you right now to think about those goals, try to think about what the, your SMART goals are, and then think about some images that might relay along with those as well. So I usually would use Google or making a Pinterest board is the easiest way that I know how. Um, and I would start thinking about that as I'm going along, explaining a little bit more about vision boards. So start thinking about those images, get a couple collected so that you can follow along with me in the demo. So by regularly looking at your vision board, you can stay motivated and focus on working towards your desired future. So we want to keep these things right in the forefront of our minds, like I once said. And then we also talked about how visualization is so important. Not only do you have the opportunity to write these goals down, but you are able to see them over and over again and putting them in a space where you never forget. Um, to create one, today we're gonna be doing it digitally, but way back when, you know, when we only had magazines and other things to utilize, we may have printed out images, cut them out from magazines, um, and use materials like glitter and glue and all that messy stuff that you're going to have to utilize, maybe from your local craft store, um, to resonate with your goals, arrange them on a board, and place them in a visible location, like I said. A great place could be in your dorm room, maybe above your bed, maybe at the mirror. I know that's something that I definitely did during college, having those things, maybe words of affirmation, goals. Um, and those things of those nature right there on my mirror every day when I wake up um, and look at myself, you know, that's something you should do as well, just to make sure that you're affirming yourself and seeing everything that you want to accomplish right there in your face um, to show what you're doing in the future. You can go to the next slide. So when we're talking about vision boards, we want to think about these different categories called the domains of life. So there's six different domains of life, family, education, fun, personal development, health and well-being, and friends. So just to give an example, I know Alexa maybe gave a couple of examples already about what goals look like and what SMART goals look like. So one of my personal examples as well does have to do with the gym and getting fit, and that would be a health and well-being um, goal. So my goal is I want to start running three times a week, which is a lot. But luckily, tomorrow is February 1st, and that's when I would like to start it. So we've already showed that we're making a specific goal, measuring it. I want to do it three times a week. Is that something that's achievable for me? Sure, I can definitely achieve that. I'm not doing it every day, so that's something that I can start doing. Um, and that's a clear and concise goal. Is it relevant to what I want to do? Sure, because running is something that can help me clear my headspace and put me in a place of meditation so that I can also attain 
um, a good mental space and improve my mental health. So we definitely want to make sure that as we're looking at those goals, we're making sure they're following the SMART goals. And then the time would obviously be starting tomorrow. Um, and we're able to lace up our shoes and get on that running track as of tomorrow. So I want to start by also sharing my screen. I'm going to start the demo. Okay. One moment. Okay, so this is me sharing my screen here. I just wanted to quickly hop over to my Pinterest board so you all can see everything that I have saved here, just to give you a couple of ideas of what that may look like. So I try to think about my goals and things that I wanted to accomplish currently right now, but also when I was in college and things that were important to me to add onto this list. So I hope you're thinking, I hope you're looking right now so you can follow along with our demo. Okay, so we are here at our vision board. So I'm utilizing a screen that's big enough for my laptop screen. You do not have to do that. I'll just show you the dimensions right here. So we have 11 by eight and a half. So that's gonna be something that you can use for your laptop, but you can also, if you're at the homepage of Canva, go in the top right corner and you can click on create design. And that gives you a lot of different templates that you're able to use, whether it's Instagram story, if you would like to share your vision board, if you want, you could also use that as a wallpaper for your phone as well. Um, and we can just utilize those things. Just gonna click that at that right there. So you can choose whatever dimensions work for you, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead to our uploads and start uploading all of your images. So the images that you downloaded from Google, Pinterest, whatever the case might be, you wanna start adding these to your vision board. So I'm just clicking these images. It might seem overwhelming right now, but I promise it will create something very nice. So I'm just gonna start moving these around so that we can see the different images that we have and just clicking away. So we can look at some of the things that we have here. So these are just some of the goals that I really wanted to show and maybe some that you can relate to. Okay, so now that we have this mess <laughs> right here of different pictures and things of that nature, one thing you'll notice is that all these pictures are stacked up on each other. So how do I show, say this is a photo that I really, really want to be at the front of my vision board? How do I do that? So one of the things that you're going to be utilizing when you're doing a vision board on Canva, the best tool is position. So that's something where you can switch your photos, whether you want this photo to the front you would click there, or if you wanted it also behind another image, you can click backward, or you could also click forward. So these things are gonna allow you to move your images in the ways that make sense and what would look the best on your vision board. So as you're doing those things, you can see that you wanna make certain images larger, certain images smaller. So all these things are things you may already know, but just giving you the tools to do it on Canva. So I wanna go over three different tricks and tips today. So we're gonna go over fonts and stickers, frames and filters. So first thing that we're going to go over is fonts. So you could use text, of course, but that's a boring way to do it. And I would like to show you something cool and new. I know one thing that's really popular right now is Chrome letters. So I'm going to type in here, I'm going to type in Chrome letters. And as you can see, because I have the pro version, I have the really cool fonts, all these different ones here. But for those of you that are on the free version, I want to introduce you to this one right here. So if you're looking at any element on Canva, here's a really cool trick that you can utilize. You see these three dots right at the top of the image. You click them here and you can look at all the different things that they're 
they're listed under the keywords so you can look them up again. You could star it so that you could save this for later. But the best thing that I really like is to go to view collection. Now that gives you the opportunity to not have to type in A Chrome letter, B Chrome letter. You can just go in here and grab whatever you need, uppercase, lowercase. You could even do um, letters as well as numbers. So you have all these elements right here. Some of them may even have words. You see they have nostalgia, heaven. I don't know if those words would be relevant for your vision board, but you can do that as seen fit. Another way that you can do this, it still works for elements like stickers as well. So we're talking about mental health today. So how can we add something for mental health? Let's look at these stickers here. So I like this one right here. It says, take care of your mind. So let's look to see if this has an opportunity for us to, excuse me, let me just move this over. Oops. So let's see if this has an opportunity to see um, if there's any, sorry, let's go, let's move this right here for a second. So let's see that they have a view collection. So the same thing here, you can view the collection. You see everything that they have. These are perfect for what we're doing right now. Less stress, stay hydrated, be kind to yourself. All of these images right here. And like I said, you can continue to look at the view collection or you can star them and save them for later. So that's just showing you one way that you could add some stickers to your vision board. So I'll see this image right here is gonna be a great example for our next little tutorial here, talking about filters. So we see all these different colors, they're all blending together. Some of them are adding to the aesthetic of it. Some of them aren't. And I don't really like how this picture is just black and white. It's really boring. It's not too fun. Um, and it doesn't necessarily go with the colorful images that I already have. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in the corner and say, edit photo. So all of these, don't look at that because you may not have that on your free version, but we're gonna go ahead here to effects. I'm gonna click this little arrow here and go to dual tone. So now you see the ability to change the colors to you any color that you would like. So you can choose any color that they have from these presets, or you can change your own colors here where you have highlights and shadows. So for this specific example, I'm gonna change it right here to a light pink because I love that. And then I'm gonna also change this color to green here. This may look familiar to a couple of you. Shout out to all my AKAs on the call, Siwi. <laughs> I am also a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. So this works perfect for me here um, as we do this. So you have the choice to change any color that you want. You can also change the intensity, how light or how dark the colors show up in the highlights and shadows. And you can do this for any element across your vision board, whether it's a quote, whether it's a photo, um, just showing you that as well. It even works for stickers that aren't able to be changed. Um, the colors aren't able to be changed um, at the top of your board. So we're gonna also click over here to show how you can do this on a image. So this might be a little bit too dark. So we're going to lighten that up and see now you have a tint. You can choose any color where since we're on the pink mode, we can choose pink here, shadows. Let's also make them some shade of pink. So now I have Tony from Girlfriends in a very nicely aesthetic pink color that we can use. And I really love this one because it says, and yet somehow I managed to go on. And I know we can all relate to that as there's so many things that we're dealing with throughout life, dealing with in our schoolwork, things of that nature, but yet we managed to go on. So that's something that I really wanted to put on here. And feel free to steal this image if that's something that you like. Girlfriends was one of my favorite shows in college. So 
I don't know if that's something that you would like as well, but just wanted to put that on there as well. To even add to that, there's also filters. So these filters here, you can change them. Now that I already have, let me go and take this color off really quickly so we can see the filters a little bit better. So we have the filters here. This kind of looks like the one that I did. You can choose from vivid, soft, vintage. You can make it black and white. Whatever floats your boat, um, you can do that here and you have the opportunity to change whatever you would like to fit the aesthetic of your specific vision board. So I thought those were some things that you guys would really like to see as well. Now going on to our final um, demonstration very quickly, which is going to be frames. So when I think about the goals that we discussed, um, another one of the goals that Alexa also mentioned, so we just been in sync the whole time. Um, she also mentioned intentionally meeting up with friends or intentionally finding time to connect with your friends. So I know for me, um, I was at a out of state college. I went to school in Virginia, but I grew up in New Jersey. So a lot of my best friends that I, grew up with were hours and hours away. And I wasn't able to keep up with them as much as I was when I was seeing them in person. So one of my goals for that time could have been that I wanted to check in on them on a weekly basis. So checking in on them, we have a specific goal. Now is this checking in, just talking about who's going you know, who's going with who, who's dating who, and gossiping about the city girls. No, that's not necessarily what we were talking about. Maybe how can I support you better as a friend? How are you doing? Those questions are things that we may always, we may not always realize our friend needs to hear at that point in time. How can we build our relationship and build our bond to continue to grow as friends and help each other reach our goals. So that's one way that you can apply it to your mental health and how you can also help your friend grow in their mental health space as well. So just keeping that in mind, when I think about my friends, I think about memories and how many memories we can make together and how they are my support system and they're my loved ones. They're my family by choice, I guess you could say. I know some people would like to refer to them that way. So when I think about that, the frame that I would think of first could be a heart frame. So I'm just gonna type in heart frame here, click on that, and you see all the different options that you have here. Now, I'm not sure, I think some of these options may be pro, but it looks like a lot of them are free. So you can scroll through the options that you see on your Canva. Um, I'm gonna go with this one. So I have this frame right here, and this can really add a nice touch as a layer to your vision board. So say I have my images all laid out. I'm just going to drag this image into the heart frame, and there you have it. You have a heart with all your friends right in the middle, um, and that's something that you could use to just spice it up, add some things to your frame, um, you can also continue to add those filters on it. Maybe you have a pink filter over your friends and just show how much you really love them. Um, that could be something that you could also add. And I'm going to just take this out the frame. Um, that's detaching the image. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to show you what another frame could potentially look like. So I really like how some of these pictures, specifically this one, could be a memory, it could be a hobby, whatever you want to do. But for me, I'm going to call this a memory. And luckily, we have it right here, a Polaroid. So a really cool idea could be for your vision board that you want to make this a little bit nostalgic or say that these are things that you're, you're able to look toward and memories that you're able to make. So I would put this right here, drag it into the different frame. And a cool idea, you could even add text to the bottom of this. Um, so it looks like 
traditionally, if you have a Polaroid photo, you can write on it, write memories, even write, writing the goal at the bottom of it could be a really cool idea. So maybe for this, one thing that I want to do is learn how to play an instrument within the next year. Um, that's something really exciting. So maybe I could say, learn how to play an instrument right here, and I can measure that as a SMART goal and go through everything that we talked about um, in our goal setting to really um, solidify those things. So I'm going to, I know this looks a complete mess, and I promise that I'm a little bit better of a graphic designer than this. I'm going to show you my full version. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here to present the full version. Okay, so this is my full version here. And let's see, I want to move this a little bit out the way. Um, this is my full version. I have added some of the things that we talked about. 2022, those were elements that I added, mental health matters. Here's a picture of friends adding stickers. So these are the ways that you can do this. I changed the color of this. Um, I'm sure you guys are really, you know, creative and you can add all of these things. Um, just giving you an idea of what it could be. And one of the things I got to move this over, pardon me. One thing I'm good at is graphic design, but technical support is not my strategic <laughs> my strategic move. I'm not the best at that. But one thing I want to show here is I love this sticker, the self-love club. I hope you guys are all joining that type of club. Um, because like we said, self-care self is the most important care. So I hope that you enjoyed my small demonstration on how to create a vision board on Canva. And hopefully you can utilize some of these tools to make yours look even better um, I know you guys are really creative and you probably have all these things figured out if you didn't know already, but I hope this helped you just a little bit and I hope that you can utilize all the goals that you're creating for your mental health and put them into fruition onto your vision boards. Um, so I would really love to see some of the vision boards. So hopefully we can, you know, some people may have already been doing them. I know they take a little bit longer than this 20 minutes, but hopefully we can see some vision boards um, and get some of those submissions either back to ICB, so ICB at uncf.org, or also the Steve Fund. That would be really great to see you all's creations of how you created your vision boards. I also wanna leave room for, if there's any goals that you would like to share, you can definitely put them in the chat about how you're thinking about your SMART goals just to inspire anyone else. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to let the presentation go back and I'm gonna see what you guys are saying in the chat about my graphic design skills. Remember, I'm an artist and I'm very sensitive about my stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krista. You're getting so much love. So, so, so much love in the chat. Thank you, everyone. I think Alexa is coming up to close us out with uh, some workshop conclusions, and then I'll hop in to round us out for, for today. Yes, yes. Krista, I just want to say I was motivated looking at that. It was very beautiful, well put together. You had all the different domains that you want to grow in and the goals that you want to achieve and how you see yourself. I think that's amazing. And I see that, you know, the chat box is going off. They're loving it. So as you guys are enjoying Krista's um, digital design, I want you to reflect on where you are today. And I know we're at the end of January, but to be honest, you can start your goals anytime, right? And then luckily, February 1st is tomorrow. So think about who you are, the different domains of life, and where what kind of goals that you want to accomplish? What do you want to include on your vision board, right? So if you guys can put um, where you want to, where you see yourself and what goals you have that you want to include on your vision boards in the chat. I think that would be great. Let's share it out loud. You may give your peers an idea of what they want to accomplish. Right. 
And I love, Krista, that you put being intentional about your friends and showing up in spaces to encourage them and to be positive, right? You know, gossip happens, but encouraging is so important for personal growth. So thank you for sharing that. So just to give an overview, we talked a lot about the benefits of goal setting and how it impacts our mental health and just looking at how everyone loves this and you know, can see themselves in that and can see themselves grow, you see that there's a benefit. We talked about short-term and long-term goals, right? How are we going to accomplish that? Smart goals, breaking it down. And I also just want to go quickly to some of the comments because I see people put having a better sleep schedule. That is so important for your mental health to have um, important sleep hygiene, right? Making sure you're getting those seven to eight hours of sleep at night so that you can be fully functioning in the more, in the daytime. Having a more positive mindset and self-image, right? So looking at yourself, and I believe Krista said it, affirming yourself every morning, even when you don't feel good about yourself, affirming yourself is so important because what you're doing is you're influencing your mind to see yourself as that, right? Someone said to remain consistent, Oh, that's so important to check in with yourself. Maybe having little check-ins each quarter, right? And that could be part of your short-term goal. Like, okay, what did I accomplish this quarter in the first quarter? What did I accomplish in the second quarter of the year, right? How can I work on that? Um, I also want to bring a point is that like, Sometimes, right, you may not be consistent with your goals, but it's so important that you get back up and try again. Um, one of the things that I always tell my friends is like the and theory, right? I can make mistakes and still be proud of myself, right? I can have goals and not get it right all the time, right? Both can coexist at the same time. So I do have another question, guys. When are we going to start all of these goals that we're writing in the chat? Are we going to start tomorrow? Have you already started? What does that look like for you? Now. <laughs> I love that. February 1st. Yes, I love that. I love that. So good job. Thank you guys for just allowing me to be here and share space with you today. Thank you, Krista. I've learned so much from your presentation. I'm going to take some notes. Thank you so much to Alexa and Krista. Don't leave just yet. I see folks dropping off already. Stop. Hold on. Wait, we're not finished. Anosa, if you could go to the next slide. Um, I know we talked about some personal goals. Um, what we want to accomplish for our mental health this year. But as organizations, we have professional goals, right? We have organizational goals. And so if you could take a moment, pull out your phone, scan this QR code, and rate this workshop. The survey should only take two minutes max. We really, really, really want your feedback so that we can continue to deliver stellar content so that we can continue to bring beautiful, smart, um, encouraging minds like Alexa and Krista to workshops like this so that they can keep inspiring us. Um, and so please, please, please take a moment to do this survey. We would greatly appreciate it at the C Fund and at UNCF ICB. Um, and be prepared to, to hear more from us in the future. I, I see some new faces, right? Some folks who are coming from all over. Um, we do have workshops that we've recorded online already at unapologeticallyfree.org. If we can get that link dropped in the chat um, so you can go back and continue to look at that um, content that we've done over the past few months. Um, but yeah, please, please, please take a moment to fill out this survey and be on the lookout because there is definitely more to come. Thank you so much to our wonderful facilitators for presenting today. Um, thank you all for being in attendance. And thank you to our tech, background tech, Anosa, for um, leading us on the slides and controlling all the slides for us. Thank you so much to Victoria and our partners um, at UNCF ICB. And yeah, thank you once again to everybody else. And we will see you soon. All right, y'all take care. Be well.